the real capstone to, 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 the, to the Super Bowl and like the, and Joe Biden's very good week, which we need to talk about, was the uh, the, the official White House Twitter account posting a dark branded meme, sort of like being like, it's all going according to plan. And I think it's fair to say it was for the win. I think he broke the internet. <laughs> but like doing that at the time when like, as I, as I mentioned earlier, is, during the Super Bowl, Israel started bombing like the, the, the safe zone that they've herded like about a million people into producing some of the worst images I've seen since this shit began. Like un- oh, it's un- awful. Un- yeah. unspeakable atrocity. And I, and then Biden just doing the dark Brandon meme while this shit is going on. What is, you got to admit, yeah. though, it is a brilliant move to just be like, all the Gentiles will be occupied. <laughs> doing that meme, like, and the, the crux of it is like, he's playing 4D chess. And then the next day, your State Department is like, well, we can't do anything. They, yeah. No one will listen to us. <laughs> well, uh, we're really, unable to do it. It was, it was, it was Joe Biden, like, it's like a, this sort of like grainy black and white image of Joe Biden grinning demonically with glowing red eyes. And he's like, yeah, it's all going according to plan. Like he rigged the Super Bowl for Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Like, uh, like right wingers are sort of, by the way, was I, this was this an accident? Was like some intern like no 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 no, no, no. This, 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 official... this was this was started as a joke. Yeah, like uh-huh. people the people who did this at first. I'm talking about the very first people who did it, who created it. It wasn't a pro Biden thing. It was a joke because yeah. you know his he was having like the worst approval ratings ever, and they thought it would be funny if they made like fash wave Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like like if they made him seem like Hitler. So do you yeah, think well, we don't have to imagine what that's like, like yeah. anymore. Do you think the team thought it was like a a compliment? Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's yes. literally yes. that's literally what happened. Glowing red eyes. Yes. Nothing says charisma like <laughs> glowing red eyes. That's yeah. liter- but the, those people love they think it's the coolest thing ever. And like every time I've noticed every time Biden like shits his pants or shows up to a press conference naked, they bust out <laughs> red, dark Brandon the next day and they're yeah. like uh, everything's fine. He's not going to die soon. Uh, it's like uh, also uh, like in, in what he was referencing, like the, the Super Bowl psyop conspiracy. I just saw before he uh, got on, someone said, I never would have guessed 10 years ago that liberals would get the NFL and the national divorce. But I guess that's that's what's happening now because football is gay and Satan. <laughs> I said there were a lot of funny uh, posts. From, uh, the, from from right wingers yeah. that were you know oh like, uh, watching the sports ball yeah I'll, I'll be wearing a tuxedo and going to church that oh was literally God. literally one of those was like you know oh uh, liberals are eating goy slop I love goy slop <laughs> goy slop is so fun every once in a, every once in a while every once in a while those those guys come up with something that like they they don't even know how funny it yeah, is yeah yeah goy slop is pretty funny because it's like well that's how I would describe what they eat. <laughs> I you know, know. Like, <laughs> and and we do. I had some kind of mayonnaise based salad while I was there. It it it, it is a biological genetic thing that love like it. the the sons of Europe they love the sloppiest thing I've ever had, <laughs> which is buffalo chicken dip. When I see that, I want to fucking vomit. I do I think hate it's so buffalo disgusting. sauce. I really? despise I love, I love buffalo, buffalo sauce. I love, buffalo sauce. I, I love, I love actually even more, Chris and I were talking about this, even more than ranch, which is the most, uh, how do you get a Hoosier girl to suck your dick? <laughs> dip it in ranch. That's a go around. I like blue cheese, which I think might even be more <laughs> yeah. Gentile. But I'm talking about the stuff that's made in a crock pot yes. where it's like yeah. it's like a cheese sauce with bits of chicken I'm in a, it. I'm going to make you disgusting. tater tot hot dish. <laughs> that tater tot uh, hot I is almost, fine. I almost made buffalo chicken dip for Josh Androsky's party until he told me it was already spoken for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like but these guys, the post I saw though where the guy was talking about goy slop, he said, you know, they're eating goy slop and they're wearing another man's name on the back of their jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we're praying and wearing dress clothes. <laughs> yes. And it's we're, like, are you 12? Yeah, they're, yeah, like, they're, like, they're like, I won't be watching the Super Bowl. I'll be playing dress up with my friends. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. what do you think it is? Like, because I, they, just, they still have the, the huge military thing. There's still the weird it's, Christian it's, it's, guys. No, it's, it's just because Travis Kelsey got vaccinated and Taylor Swift is his girlfriend. Uh, yeah, that's basically yeah. Yeah. it. And it uh, and the NFL highlights the achievements of black they people. Love so that. she looks like if Ava Braun was like a praying mantis. She's like the <laughs> yeah. whitest woman on earth. I don't like in 2019. Just like you said, she started looking like you know a typist for the SS. <laughs> <laughs> so 
someone who would go on a date with Goering. So I feel I, like I, you're sprung as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since she started looking like that, you know, perfect. Ilsa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I want to say that because, like, obviously, like, uh, like the, the 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 massacre that happened during the Super Bowl. This is like, you know, there's a lot of kayfabe going on here. But like, this is you know coming on the heels of a week in which, like, the the U.S. State Department and their spokespeople have just basically said, yeah, I mean, I if if that was us, we wouldn't do that. Like, you know, like, they, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm not we're here to tell them what to do. But if that was us, I probably wouldn't do that. They said. um Yesterday, during the same press conference where they said they're unable to make Israel do anything, yeah. they said, well, obviously, we're, we're unhappy with the results. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, well, who are you, a Kyle Shanahan talking yeah. about the fucking overtime? Like they're, they're like gentle parents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but I, I want to talk because, like, yeah, he said, like, every time something unspeakable happens, they try to dark Brandon. But then there's, like, a pattern here where, like, it, it, the worse it gets in Gaza, they keep, like, leaking stuff to the press about, like, you know, behind the scenes, Joe Biden is actually quite upset about this. And I want to talk about this one. This is NBC News from this morning. It says, Biden disparages Netanyahu in private, but hasn't significantly changed U.S. policy towards Israel and Gaza. It reads, President Joe Biden has been venting his frustration in recent private conversations, some of them with campaign donors, over his inability to persuade Israel to change its military tactics in the Gaza Strip. And he has named Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as his primary obstacle, according to five people uh, directly directly familiar with his comments. Biden has said he's trying to get Israel to agree to a ceasefire, but Netanyahu is giving him hell and is impossible to deal with. And then it goes on to say like that he, he calls him, at least in three recent instances, Biden has called Netanyahu an asshole, according to three people directly familiar with his comments. It's like, do they think that this makes him look good, like impotently talking shit about some guy behind his back? Yeah, Netanyahu yeah. straight up just openly says, we have to tell our friends no. Like he's way more assertive. Yeah, about he's like it. Biden is calling Biden's calling Netanyahu a real jerk to people behind his back. It's just like I'm just imagining him talking. He's talking about Netanyahu like the guy uh, Jerry Lundegaard tries to sell True Coat to. <laughs> You're a f fucking liar, Mister Netanyahu. You lied to me, Mister Lundegaard. You're a bald faced liar. They were they've been doing this for weeks now, and like. It, they don't realize how fucking weak it makes yeah. them look. Like, if we're going to take it, like, I don't believe them. I'm not taking them at face yeah, value yeah, yeah. that they're even trying anything. But if they were, and somehow with a nation that we're, we're going to give $17 billion to, a nation that cannot fucking exist without the most help mm -hmm. out of anyone. They need so much fucking help just to keep running. They admit it, that you can't get them really? to do anything. I really kind of like, I thought under this, at this point, they have at least a some level of self-sustainability no. or as small as they are. No, like during, during Obama, one of their goals was to like become more self-reliant. Like a normal to, country. Yeah, right. to, to have, to have it so that they But why they're, would you if, if, you know, mom doesn't make you move out of the basement? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they tried and they failed and they openly admit that they weren't able to do that. Yeah. And it, I mean, they need a lot of help. Not all of it is from America, of course, yeah. they they uh, get help from, you know, the Five Eyes Nations. They get a lot of help from Russia, which no one on any side likes to admit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, they, they are one of the most uh, dependent nations on Earth. Well, calling well, publicly for a ceasefire, I mean, like, it would make them look even more impotent because he would just be like, no. Yeah. Like, I, there's no... Well, it's it's more embarrassing the leaks or whatever, but like he's kind of just in a like they're they're not gonna stop fucking giving them money. Well, yeah, and then I, I saw this morning the State Department press conference with that guy Matt Miller, and they were asked like, well, if the president's like unhappy with what's going on right here, like if they, has he used any leverage? And the Matt Miller said. We think the president's words matter. So, like, next week, if Israel kills another 2,000 children, he may drop the F-bomb. Yeah. He may yeah, break up the F-word. They're never going to do anything. Even, even, like, Netanyahu is like, yeah, we're not going to listen to this senile old man. Like, he does not care. You know, like, the words they're talking about that matter was Biden during his press conference that was overshadowed because he yeah. called CC Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> because he said CC was a foo. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he said that Israel's response was over the over top. Over the top. Wow. Wow. Wa wa watch out there, Edward Said. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bit much. It's, it's a little on the nose. It's a yikes from me. Okay, but like, okay, now, now we got to talk about last week, the Joe Biden, the, 
the Joe Biden press conference, which like I wasn't aware it was even going on at the time. And then I like, look at the timeline. It's blowing up. I had to stop watching Love on the Spectrum, a show, <laughs> a show I deeply love because I was just like, I need to dive into this. Who let him do this? Who let him? They were like, OK, well, the special. I mean, I guess they were kind of forced to because the special counsel's report basically said about Biden's own mishandled classified documents case said we were de- like we, basically we declined to prosecute because any jury would just find him a well-meaning but essentially forgetful and elderly old man. Yeah, and then they, they kind of like, admitted it. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then like they were like, well, I'm, time to show you who's elderly and forgetful. And <laughs> yeah. he comes out there and I mean like the CC Mexico thing I'm 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 going to give him a pass on that. I think the thing that really uh, the thing that really set this off was the fact that um, he referred to Mitterrand as the president of Germany. That was before. That was, that before. was before. That was before. But like going into this, and yeah. then he calls CC the president of Mexico, which is our good friend Ev. Shout out Agent Napoleon said it's kind of understandable because Egypt and Mexico deserts walls on their borders and giant pyramids giant yeah giant yeah. Pyramids. yellow yellow filter yeah. when you're in them in a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the granny the granny piss filter on yeah. when the american movie is trying to say that we're in either egypt or mexico but um he could not have looked worse at that press conference yeah i did, i didn't watch it i it, saw a few clips it was, and i was, it was like i'm going to disaster like yeah it I like it, give me some highlights. He may as well have walked out naked. Yeah, like that's like he looked. He looks <laughs> fucking awful. They gave him another facelift. I've I think. seen pictures. He looks really weird. Yeah, he looked better before the facelifts. I don't know why they keep doing this. Well, he looks better like, before the insane teeth. Yeah, I they don't, they are not dressing him up well. Think about being him for a second. Think about being Biden, eighty one years old. You don't even know when your son died. And every day you're waking up with a new face. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> like, do you think that's helping? Oh things? my God. Yeah, yeah. That they they say that like when you get. Uh, do you remember the show The Swan? Yeah, yeah. That's that's literally oh, yeah. when 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 society was like, okay, we need to read this back. We've done some horrible, <laughs> disgusting things. But apparently, like when they they weren't allowed to look at themselves, and then. Uh, after the plastic surgery, and then they took it off and looked in the mirror, and everyone cried, and they they kind of edited it to make it be like, oh, they're so happy that they're not fugly and thus <laughs> and thus useless bitches. But apparently, like the, after they talked to a few of them, they're like, I was freaking out. It was really, really, really upsetting. He must be having that like every other day at least, and then yeah. he forgets about it and looks for his slippers or whatever. Yeah, no, it's got to be just jarring. But like he. There's no getting out of this, you know, no. like the only move they have is to be like, well, like Trump, Trump's he's also old senile too, mm-hmm. which is true. Yeah. Like they're both yeah, yeah. like the day, the same day or the day after Trump uh, called Orban the leader of Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There's it's, just there's no like affirmative defense. Well, he's having it. more mo- more senior moments, too. I've noticed Trump. Yeah. Those yeah. Are, those well, are I mean, like, they're both bit. in their fucking 80s. Yeah. And I, was, I was talking to Chris before he got on and it's like. Is it like, you know, does he have full, full blown senile dementia? Probably not there yet, but like his problem is that he's 84 fucking years old. You know, like you can only do so much. And as Chris, as you were saying, it's just like, regardless of what you think about it, like the job is to perform the office of the presidency. You have to like play the part. And he is failing at that because of one reason or another. It's, it's interesting comparing Trump to Biden because they're basically perfectly inverted, right? Like, I think by I, I'm I'm not as bullish on like the Biden is like senile as other people. I think he's probably fine, but he cannot appear I'm normal. I'm buying, I'm buying right now. Uh, it's also whereas it is, it's Trump. A, it's a spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Trump, I believe his brain is mush, but he's a fantastic performer. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He can look commanding. Yeah. You don't actually need to have it together to have charisma. Yeah. Well, I mean, fix your point. Like when, when I saw this press conference, people, I was just thinking like it's impossible for me to imagine that they that they bring him into like they keep going with him to the election dead. It's impossible for you to imagine, but also impossible for me to imagine that they do anything about this. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just like it's just Well look, here's the thing. In terms of performing competency and professionalism and knowing that there's an adult in charge, they can always rely on competence. Well, I mean, have you, have, you noticed, have you noticed this week, like every time Joe Biden uh, has a press conference or has a senior oop, oopsie moment, everyone resurfaces the coconut tree clip. Yeah. yeah. The coconut tree, she's drawing the fire. The coconut tree was, right. was going off this week. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. I love yeah. it. I love it. was going that. off. I... But you know, 
I, know, I don't care if it makes me a basic bitch. I rewatched it like three times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. great. It's great. And honestly, <laughs> like I used to say Kamala would do even worse than Biden. But no, it's I don't like, believe that no. now. I don't believe that anymore. She rocks. Think about a debate. She thinks she's at brunch. She has talk about not knowing where you are. Yeah. Think about like Biden doesn't know where he is in a scary way. But right. Kamala doesn't know where she is in a fun way. Like little yeah. Zan. Like, yeah. Yeah. She's or no, she's like Amelia Bedelia to me. <laughs> I think about it. Okay, think I think about I wanna... a debate where Trump is like he's, he's, you know, one of those bad Trump performances where he spends the entire time talking about the 49th most important guy in the FBI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I hate I hate Lenny Cornhill. Uh, <laughs> and Kamala is up there and she's saying things like places are things we've all been to. <laughs> But I mean, speaking of performing the office of the presidency, I, I, Chris, once again, I have, to, I have to nod my cap to you. The coconut tree speech, the coconut tree comments, if Obama had delivered the exact same words, but just in Obama speak, people would still be yeah. talking about it as a transcendent moment I, in American really, politics. Really, yeah. I was really cracking like myself up go, just going, uh, let me be clear. You did yeah. not fall out of that coconut tree. <laughs> you are the product of your content. It's exactly like uh, one of those, I don't know if there were any of the Super Bowl, uh, but those commercials that tend to run during the Super Bowl where you hear like, doon, 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 piano, and they just show a bunch of stock footage and they're like, we're moving forward. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When ambition meets a dream, everyone is there. It's like one yeah. of those things. The thing that's like driving me crazy, not just with like the Biden senility stuff, but just like uh, maybe more pertinently, the fact that he is doing worse than anybody at this juncture in their presidency in mm -hmm. the modern era. Like, he is at Bush in 2007, 2008 territory. Yeah. It's astounding that like the fallback for the, the pro Biden people, it, it, just for left liberals in general, is like, well, the media is unfair. Yeah. Joe Biden mm -hmm. has been in politics since 1970. Shouldn't he know how to deal with the media at this point? Wasn't that didn't you bring out the idea that this guy has done so much and maybe he's been on the wrong side of almost every major decision. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But he's just, he's done so much. He showed he up. He knows how to deal with all of this. It do, he doesn't know, neither he nor his advisors seem like they know how to do anything. They, they, their response to anything, anything in the media, and I'm sorry, like, the media reporting that he called CC Mexican is not biased. No, that, he did, he he did, did that. that. Yeah. He did that. But, like, that they don't have any... They don't have any move besides like, you know, it's treason to post Hunter's cock in 2020. <laughs> it, well, it Felix, I mean, I, I'm thinking about that like in light of uh, the news report that came out this week about how he sent some like deputy NSA guy to Michigan to talk to like handpicked Arab and Muslim community leaders. And the comments that he made is like, look, we feel that there's been an inaccurate perception cultivated that's wholly inaccurate that we don't care about the loss of Palestinian life. And like, I'm here to show you that we definitely, we do care and we do see them as people. But like similar to the Biden age thing is that it's like in policy, it's like, it's never the thing itself. It's always people's perceiving the thing yeah. is the problem. Mm -hmm. And then it's always like the media's fault for allowing people to perceive things that like are wildly uh, sort of different than like what the official line is. It reminds me of people who act like Bernie didn't really lose because, like, the party did something unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Well, like, I'm fucking sorry, but yeah. we knew that they would do things like that. And if we had a working plan to mitigate that, then we... Then, or the, the that, horses, that, maybe. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, that, that you're, you are supposed to be able to account for those things. It they, is very, yeah, like... Look, the only reason that we lost is because they beat us. It's like, yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. what they're gonna. They're trying uh, very hard, and they. You know, my my, life my favorite reaction win. to the Biden press conference, though, was like, uh, so, so some woman who was just like, oh, like you're. Oh, like you're making fun of Biden's memory. Tell me where your AirPods are. Like, tell me where your earbuds are right now. And I'm like, in their case, okay? Like, what do, what do you want from me here, lady? And I'm not running for president either. Yeah, that, the thing that drives me fucking nuts is he wasn't, like, drafted into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He chose to do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's not, he's not doing all of us a fucking favor. And I want to I have like one, one, one of these sort of like scramble to like uh, sort of legitimize this is in the New York Times is an op-ed piece. I'm a neuroscientist. We're thinking about Biden's memory and age in the wrong way. 
So like, yeah, you're thinking it's a problem and that's wrong. And I just want to highlight one, one piece from this. It says here, Mr. Biden is the same age as Harrison Ford, Paul McCartney, and Martin Scorsese. Yeah, have you, seen Harrison, have you seen Harrison Ford lately, by the way? He's also a bit younger than Jane Fonda and a lot younger than Berkshire Hathaway CEO Warren Buffett. All these individuals are considered to be at the top of their professions. And yet I would not be surprised if they are more forgetful and absent-minded when they, than, than when they were younger. In other words, an individual's age does not say anything definitive about their cognitive status or where it will head in the near future. To that, I got to say, uh, Martin Scorsese did Killers of the Flower Moon this year, yeah. and Joe Biden did Killers of Every Palestinian Child <laughs> yeah. this year. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, look, the, it, what, what, do you, what, what kind of comparison do you want to draw here? And once again, I'm not voting for Martin Scorsese to be president, although I wish I could. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a write-in this year. It is, it's also weird because it's like, well, I don't know. I also see him talking. And I saw the little narration that Scorsese did before Killers of the Flower Moon, and I'm like, he seems like he's got it together. Maybe he doesn't, but at the very least, I don't constantly see Martin Scorsese having senior moments. Yeah, well, he was in a Super Bowl commercial, too. I forgot about that. Yeah, his output is like, yeah, just signing off on every horrific crime against humanity done by Israel or like trying to play 5D chess by like, I don't know, trying to pass an immigration bill that just is everything that the Republican Party wants. Yeah, like ending all asylum. Yeah. I mean, I guess their response to that would be like, look at this uh, one column on this graph about consumer sentiment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got it. So yeah, like, I mean, it, I, I just don't know where this is going. Like I said, it's impossible. It's insane to me that they would let this guy continue to run for president. Just get Kamala in there. If that's what, if that's what it takes. You'd be better off with Kamala at this point. I don't know. Like, yeah. But I, I, I'd be not surprised at all if, they, if, if it's November and he's still out there. This is their best asset right now is Dobbs. It's abortion. And Biden, I don't even think this is a product of senility. I think it's more product of like how fucking old he is and how he calculates political decisions. It's always 1995 for him. He's still going out there and saying, you know, I'm not for abortion on demand, which is <laughs> like the double not on demand. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. As opposed to what? A lottery system? <laughs> <laughs> like it's so. I, I, that, and you don't enter yourself. You have to do. It's like yeah. Shirley Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> But he, it's like that. Is, it's so that so is just not meeting the moment. He's running, like, he's we're running so away beyond that. from the single issue in which he has like a, a 50 point advantage over Trump and the Republican but Party. But at the same time, he's fucking showing up to like huge events that are like anniversary of Roe v. Wade. I remember the, the fucking PR statement for it. It's like celebrating Roe v. Wade. It's like, I don't think you get to celebrate it when you lost it on your watch. Yeah. yeah. The the arguments are always bringing out like, you know, their best one. The best thing they have is abortion. Right. But the other stuff is like, you know, uh, think about what Trump will do to the entire human. Think about what he'll do at the border. You mean everything that Democrats tried to do like yeah. last week? Yeah, last week <laughs> they tried to just they, give yeah. give the Republican Party the Stephen Miller immigration plan. And they were like, what do you want from us? We can we we did everything they wanted and we still they still won't be play nice. What you know it's just like well, then why should I fucking vote for you? Yeah, even if even if the point of doing that was to show that Republicans are just obstructionists, who ca who fucking cares? Shouldn't we know that by now? I would like to find out who that moved. Yeah. Who was like I'm not voting for Biden and then they saw that the Republicans just didn't vote for like the bad immigration bill. Oh my God, these guys don't want to get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> Who does this work on? Who is this for?